Guys, welcome to the channel. We're back out again. Uh, we're down by the coffee cup. We're left of the coffee cup this time. I've come down here. Wayne's down here fishing. I'm going to be doing a few few hours. We're, we're at the bottom of the tide, and we're going to be fishing the tide up. We're only small tides, but there are a few flatfish showing up at the moment. Um, apparently, place a couple of places have been seen down there, but there's been dabs caught down there. Um, and on the flood, there's always a chance of a ray or a dogfish or anything. Wayne's already had a double shot of white in, so they're obviously biting. That rhymed, didn't mean it to. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I've just literally just got down here. Wayne's beat me to it. So I've got my rods and the tripod down, quite a way down, because I'm quite high up the bank at the high water mark, so I don't have to keep moving the, the, the shelter. Um, but I'm going to get down there. The rods are set up and rigged up. I'm going to get some baits on and get them out into the sea, and I'll let you know if I catch anything. So, sorry about the rushed intro, um, I was a bit keen to get the rods out because it's at low tide at the moment, not a lot of pull out there, um, and apparently in the match that was down there last night, there were quite a few dabs caught, um, and it's a dab that I'm after, that's a target species tonight, I haven't caught a dab for maybe 30 years <laughs> since I last caught a dab, absolutely love them, I think they're fantastic, I think they're the smallest of the flatfish family that we've got around here. Um, and they're cute and I just love them and I haven't caught one for so long and um, even when I did that stint of sea fishing last year and the year before when I was down there I was really trying for one but I didn't manage to catch one so um, if we could get one over the next few sessions that would be really really cool um, apparently a couple of plays showed up last night in the match as well not many dogfish and obviously loads and loads of whiting so I think it's going to be a case of getting through the whiting see if we can get one of these flays but at the moment, I've got the tackle, uh, so I've got the rods all the way down the beach, um, down by the water's edge, and it is quite a trek. So um, all of this kit, the, the uh, shelter and everything, I'm gonna keep up here, and I'm gonna gradually work back with the tide until top of the tide, I'll be back up here with you guys. Um, but I'll keep coming back and giving you updates. If I catch any fish, I'll come and show you. Um, but until then, I'm gonna go and stand by the rods and um, do my thing and see if I can catch one of these dabs. Keep everything crossed for me. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm fishing for dabs at the moment while it's low like this. Loads of sand out there, perfect for them. So I'm fishing um, both rods in that, in that camp. I've got a, a Wessex rig, which is a one up, one down rig. And I've got the rod tips fairly low to the beach. So if I had the rod tips up really high, the top hook might be in danger of not actually being on the, on the seabed. And obviously fishing for flatties, I want all the hooks on the, on the deck. So I've got the rod tips pretty low. The other rod I put out the flounder rig, just a running ledger with two hooks on that I was using up at the Ada the other day. Perfect few beads on it, small hooks, perfect for, for flounders, dabs, anything like that. So those are out there with ragworm tipped off with a little bit of black lug on both rods. And initially I put them out without any grippers on just to see what the state of the tide was. Um, and they've swung round to the left quite, quite a bit. Not majorly, but they have swung round a bit. And um, there's a few snags out there. Wayne's just got caught on a snag. He managed to get, get it free and lo not lose any tackle. But um, if there's snags out there, the last thing you want to do is have that lead searching around looking for the snags. Um, so I'm just going to get a couple of grippers out of the box. Next time I wind in, I'm going to put a couple of grippers on and get them out there and get them fixed into that seabed. So that's the plan now. <clears throat> so slow at the moment. This is a little bit rubbishy, this filming at night time. I'd love to do more. During the day, you've got stuff to see. Um, but at night time, it's just me talking to the camera or maybe coming up with a fish. But apart from that, it's pitch black. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to invest in a, a really good night light, like a floodlight. So I can actually light up the fishing area and you can see a bit more sort of casting out, winding in, and a little bit more of what's going on. Um, but the camera that I've got, it's, it's, it does a job. It does a really good job. It's done a good job for years. But it is a little bit crappy in low light. So, I mean, the moon's out, shining on the water, people walking along hand in hand. There's a few kayakers going out with headlamps on, going out to do some, I don't know, maybe just kayaking, maybe they're going to go out and do a bit of fishing. But there's stuff going on. But you can see it with a naked eye, but not so much um, with, the, with a camera that's not good in low light. So, Yeah, apologies about that. But um, it is dead, dead low water. It is absolutely slack. Um, Wayne had another white in. Um, so he's had three now. But he's had them, he's been tipping off with squid and mackerel, and I think that's the key for the whiting. I'm fishing with straight worm, I'm fishing with ragworm tipped off with black lugworm. Um, and I've got them out there and I'm leaving them out there. I just wound one in, the baits had been chewed up a bit and I had eel slime up my hook link, so I'm glad that it didn't get hooked, because, um, yeah, not my favourite things to unhook. 
But, um, but they're back out there again. I've got one out there with a the gripper on, so it's staying put, and I've got one out there with a the searching lead, um, and it's moving around. I've wound two in now, and I haven't had any snags, touch wood. So um, I don't think there's too much out there, at least in my casting range. I'm not casting out too far, I'm not banging them out, probably putting them out about 50, 60 yards. Um, if they're any further out than that, then they can stay there. But, um, yeah, like I say, it's, it's dead bottom of the tide, dead slack. There's no tide run out there at all, so it's, I think it's going to be a bit slow at the moment. But I think as soon as the tide starts turning and coming up, that's when we're going to start seeing some action. I think the tings are going to come on the feed big time. And then I'll probably switch one of the rods over to an up and over. Um, and probably fish. I've got some bluey, I've got some squid, um, ragworm and lugworm. So I can put some big baits out on one on an up and over, a big panel, and scratch about with the other rod. And if we get inundated with tings, then I might switch both rods over to an up and over pulley with a panel and big baits on um, and see if we can winkle out something a bit sizable. But yeah, all that to come. So exciting. It's beautiful down here. There's no wind. I haven't got the camera down by the water's edge because there is a breeze. And for some reason, this microphone seems to pick up the breeze. It did in the last flounder video. I was struggling a little bit with the wind and it really wasn't that windy. So um, I think a, cam uh, a, a microphone is something I'm going to have to invest in as well. But enough waffle. I've got a flask of OXO. So I'm going to have a nice warm drink and uh, go and watch these rod tips. So I've brought you down to the beach in the hope that you can see what's going on. I've got my flood weight on. It's about the best I've got, but I am going to get a brighter one, happening on those. Probably going to wind the right hand rod in in a minute because it's been out there for a little while. And uh, look forward to the tide starting to run because I think that's when things will pick up. And there we have my first fish of the night. Ting! They don't call me the Ting King for nothing. Sooner or later I was going to get off the mark and it was always going to be one of these. Yeah, perfect live bait size. Back it right back out. I think the tide's starting to move and the whiting have turned up now. <laughs> We're getting two at a time. Loads of them out there. So uh, it's time now for me to switch one of the rods over to a big bait. So I've got a, a bluey and squid wrap, which I'm going to put on. Not this rod, I'm going to fish the uh, one up, one down, scratching. And the other rod, I'm going to put an up and over pulley rig on. Yeah. So we're in business now. I've got a big bait rod out. The water's getting a bit closer, so I've got a feeling we're going to be retreating up the bank a little bit in a minute. But this is the time now. This is the flood, and I think if there's a, if there's a big fish out there, this is the time we're going to get it. Uh, so I've got one ray rod out there now. It, it's fishing for rays. It could pick up a number of things, but it's definitely fishing for a ray. And I've still got the the, uh, the scratching uh, one up, one down out there as well, which just a double shot on. So if the tings get too much. I might switch both rods over to big baits and sort of put all my eggs in that basket. Um, the rays might not turn up tonight, so it might be a, a, a disappointing one if that does happen, but you've got to be in it to win it and maximise your chances. So 
we'll see how the trip pans out but this is it now this is I'm rubbing my hands together I'm excited now and I think if we're going to get one it's going to be in the next couple of hours well I thought I had an half decent bite on there look at that for a bass <laughs> that's a couple of pounds that's a sizable fish that is that is immense. Give up a good scrap as well. Such a cool fish. Absolutely beautiful that is. Look at that. Well chopped. On the that's on the scratching rod on the little bit of a uh, little bit of rag tipped off with a little bit of black lug. What a fish. Yeah, that's amazing. Can run off him and slip him back in the surf. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So a little bit of excitement is occurring. I've had a little bit of a rattle on my left hand rod on the um, on the scratching rod with a bit of worm on. Um, and I let it develop for a while and I wound in just expecting there to be a ting on there and there was nothing on there. So I whizzed it back out again and with that I heard a little bit of a yelp coming from a, from the next swim along. And, uh, and Wayne's just caught my target species, a dab. Fantastic to see one on the bank. Such a gorgeous little fish. Absolutely perfect in every way. Um, and he had a little, little rattle on the rod tip, pretty much the same as what I had, uh, and on, on little pieces of ragworm, so absolutely fantastic, and made up for him as well. And I've just come back over and looked at the, the same rod, and um, it's rattling away again, so I'm going to leave it this time. There's two walks on there anyway, so I'm going to leave it and let the boat develop, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we might see one, we might see one. So Wayne had that dab, and I got all excited when I saw a boat on the rod tip. I let it develop, started winding it in, I can feel there's a little bit of extra weight on there and I'm not happy. No, I am happy, I'm happy. Caught fish. Everyone loves a weight in don't they? Really. So I'm actually back up at the shelter now. <laughs> um, fishing out at the shelter and I've just brought the rods up and this is just ready to go out this is an up and over rig with a nice big bluey and squid wrap on there just going to pin that out and then once that's out i'll do the scratching rod and get that out as well and then we're back fishing again yes yeah, so it's been a really enjoyable session so far so lovely to be out on the beach and it is an absolutely perfect night for it. It's not cold. I have got a new jacket and this thing is really, really warm. But my hands aren't cold. Um, and usually if it's really bitterly cold, my hands are cold. But the sky's clear and there's millions of stars out. So you would expect it to be cold, but it's just not. Um, but a flask of Oxo always helps to warm the cockles. And we've had some fish. Wayne's had a load of um, whiting. He's been using fish baits, little pieces of mackerel and um, whiting, love that. I've been fishing little worm baits and uh, in the hope of a flag. But we've had that one decent bass and maybe half a dozen whiting. Um, I've got a big bait out now. Uh, it's a bit quiet, nothing's touched it at the moment, but it's one of them big baits that sits out there until something half decent comes along. I've got a bell on the end of that one, so usually you get, especially with the rage, you can get a big old pull over and then it goes full slack. And um, if you're not concentrating or you're pouring a drink or baiting up a rig for the next cast or something like that, you can miss that. Look up and wonder why the slack line's trailing all the way along the beach. I've got to keep my eye up because I did see some some eyes coming up the beach where there was a fox. You've got to watch the foxes because they will get in and nickel your bait. Um, but yeah, it's been a really, really enjoyable session. It's been lovely getting back down here, lovely fishing with Wayne again. Um, and lovely to see that dab that he caught, that was fantastic. I know it was a target species for me, but it was just as cool to see one on the bank. But yeah, I'm going to drink my drink. Um, probably got about another hour of the flood. So see that out and uh, see if we can get some more fish.
Right, so that's it for this rod. Um, it's funny, I just well. So that's it for this rod. Just gotta make sure you get all the old bits of rail going off. Oh. Yeah.